Please welcome Karan Gandhi from Box.com. Ain't no sunshine when she is gone It's not warm when she's away Ain't no sunshine when she's How does it feel to see yourself on the screen? Well, it's a nice picture. We can wave. Except we <laughs> added a t-shirt, which I didn't wear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the founder of Box.com, Chia Huang, yeah. Am I saying that right? Che Huang, yeah. Che Huang, there you go. Yeah. So he said uh, he has a gaming background, right? Yep. Okay. So And he said he wanted to kind of bring that to Box.com. In what way have you guys done that? I think you'll see it in my presentation. Okay. But I think what we do with the gaming background is actually change the shopping experience uh, okay. to an extent that it's almost like gaming. So we bring in kind of the concept of treasure hunt okay. to shopping. Because uh, our business model relies on having a large box, right? And so how do we get there? we use the concepts that we learned in gaming. Okay. And, and I think they, it was a surprise to them as well in the beginning that can they actually learn something from gaming mm -hmm. and bring it to Box. And you'll see how we have done that in our, in our, in our we app. We learned a little bit yesterday about gaming, how that can influence. Today we're going to yeah. learn some more. So another thing, uh, I heard that Che Huang, um, he, <laughs> sorry, yeah. he, um, he also pays for, he's offered to pay for any of the employees' children's college tuition. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, okay. so Che made an announcement earlier this year that any and every employee that works for that company, uh, their kids' education would be completely funded out of his own money that he put. His so, own money, okay. Yeah, so he, he took his uh, so sum of cash and equity that he owned in the company mm -hmm. and put it in a trust for all of us. So That's excellent. So I guess everyone is on a mission to have more kids. Seems like a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, have you heard of Jet.com? I have, yeah. Okay. Uh, they're, they're arguably one of your competitors right now, is that right? You could say so in, uh, in, in I guess, in one part of our business, right. uh, we do compete head to head, and okay. especially when it comes to marketing dollars, pretty much everyone competes for the okay. same eyeballs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so absolutely, we. So, how do you think you guys are? are how's it going with Jet? And I, you guys. I, I think we see. Uh, I, I think it's clear that Jet's going after the mothership, right. which is uh, my former employer in Amazon. Yeah. So I think it's uh, we have to be careful because you don't want to get caught in a crossfire. Yeah. But we still feel that our our model is different. It and, is, yeah. And we're still chasing the what one would become a Costco customer, but uh, don't want to go in a store, okay. right? Versus Jets going for uh, pretty much everyone and, okay. uh, and trying to become the everything store. So wh what are you going to be talking about today? So we're going to talking about, I'm going to be talking about operations. Uh, I am part <laughs> of operations. Naturally. <laughs> uh, but the idea is that, you know, how is bulk commerce different, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to talk about shipping small boxes. I'm going to talk about shipping large boxes. We're talking... 20 kilos. A box order. a human could fit in. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> or, or multiple kids, for sure, okay. as you'll you see go. from some pictures. Okay, I'll let you get to it. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. I guess. Perfect. First of all, it's a great honor to be here. It's my uh, first time in Sweden, and really have enjoyed the country so far, and hope to come back and actually see the entire country. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is boxed. Uh, I think the plan is re relatively simple, so... I'll give you an overview of what our company does, um, why are we in this business of shipping you large boxes, and then uh, talk about a little bit on why bulk, um, bulk goods or wholesale warehousing is uh, kind of exciting for us, especially in the US, and then uh, talk about how do we pull it off, right? Uh, how do we do, uh, how are our operations kind of designed to make sure we can actually ship you these boxes, right? So Boxed uh, was founded uh, 27 months ago now. We're a relatively young company. Pretty much everyone in our company is uh, quite young. Uh, we are, essentially our goal is to become the leading mobile first uh, wholesale club online, right? So it's, again, e-commerce. So there are a lot of words there, and, and I want to kind of parse it out. We want to be mobile first, mainly because that's where the trend is moving. I mean, I hardly do any of my shopping on, on web, let alone brick and mortar. Uh, you see all the people riding in New York subway even in, in the evening when they're going home. The, the number one thing they're doing is shopping. So that's why we want to be mobile first and kind of take everything we learn from there to web. And we want to be a wholesale club online. So now, th this, this is relatively new for Europeans, but for Americans, it's completely normal to buy a 12-pack of hot sauce, right, and have it in your house. It's completely normal. And there's this... Uh, kind of behavior that exists in the U.S., which is buying things in bulk. So 18 rolls of toilet paper or 9 rolls of paper towel, going to a club, uh, getting it for a really cheap price, stocking up it in your car, 
and bringing it back home and storing it in your garage. It's completely normal, right? Uh, but most of that happens in brick and mortar today. So Costco, if you have heard of Costco, a lot of customers go to Costco and buy that, Sam's Club, uh, or even uh, BJ's. These are the three leading uh, companies that do that. So we want to address that customer, right? Someone who likes buying in bulk, uh, an office admin who is forced to buy in bulk for their office, or someone who just consumes a lot of one product. So you could be buying, let's say, energy bars because you consume one a day, you're an active athlete, and you, you're looking for some discount. Right? So that's our mission. Um, so then, obvious, then an obvious question that should come to you is, well, why doesn't Amazon do it, right? I mean, or someone else do it, right? There's so many companies in the US that are in the e-commerce space. And I think what I want to draw, uh, I guess the, the, what I want to show is the offline world. Walmart and Costco have shared the same parking lot in the US for the longest time. I mean, you could go to many cities in the US and you'll find that. They both exist. They both do fine. Why? Because Walmart is a lot of selection with really affordable prices. Costco is quality but limited selection at really affordable prices. And you actually pay a membership. So you pay $100 a year or up to $100 a year to actually even shop at Costco, right? But both do fine. In the online world, that didn't exist yet. Amazon's the everything store. There are several other sites which sell you other items in a unique way. But Box is kind of trying to fit into that space, which is the wholesale items online. So why, why bulk? It's quite unsexy, honestly. Uh, well, it's a huge market, and I'm sure everyone that stands on the stage here says it's a huge market. But uh, forget that for a second. Look at what is happening. So 60% of the shoppers that go to Costco, BJ's, Sands Clubs are seniors, or what we call in the US, baby boomers, right? And so the idea is, as they age out and new consumers come in, they're not want to go to the store, right? These stores themselves don't put their SKUs online. I mean, in fact, there's only 19% SKU overlap between what you see in the store and what you see online. Why? Well, it's a classic disruption theory. You don't want to disrupt your own business, right? You're, com you're, you're perfectly fine. People are coming to your store. So we want to get a scratch of that 200 billion, and we'll be fine. So how do we do it? I think uh, this is the part where some of that gaming background that I, that I mentioned before uh, comes in. Also, just like any other company, we, you, know, we, you, you buy low and sell high. It's a retail company. We add on a margin. Uh, we have no membership, and we rely on customers coming to our app or the website to place an order. Now, our business model hinges on the fact that you buy a lot, right? I don't want, or I guess we don't, we would, we would like to customers to come in and buy everything that they need in their household so that we can fit that giant box that we ship to you and send it to you. So how do we do that? Well, our shopping experience is designed from gaming where it's more of a treasure hunt, right? Customers are not searching on our side. In fact, 90% of our customers are browsing. In fact, they browse the whole catalog and go through every item and see if they really want it. Sometimes it's an impulse buy. But what that it leads to is a full box that we can ship. And when the box is full, it makes sense to ship. And if it's full, we can actually make money, right? We pick, pack, and ship in our own warehouses. Now, it's a little bit of an uh, anomaly that a small company like ours does that, uh, especially with the funding that we had early on, which was only six million. Uh, but we're, we're very cheap, and so we figure out ways to, to do this in a, in a cheap way. And so we build a lot of technology and warehouse processes and human processes that are very you know, easy to do and extremely affordable for us to install, right? So we pick, pack, and ship, ship these orders on the same day, and these orders are out that night, and then you get the giant box outside your house um, the next morning. I know our sponsor is UPS, so I should have put a UPS logo. But uh, we, we work with both FedEx and UPS. So yeah, so the boxes then go out uh, with UPS or FedEx ground, right? Fairly simple. So then uh, a question you might be asking is then, well, how do you pull it off, right? Like this giant box thing, it sounds somewhat of an anomaly. I mean, Amazon doesn't do that. They've, they've tried. Uh, none of the other companies have kind of succeeded at this. Well, as I mentioned, you know, from our shopping experiences, the boxes go full. Now, in order to deliver this, we do a lot of behind the scenes activities to kind of keep it simple. The number one rule for us is remove variability from the operating processes so that it's a repeatable task that we can keep on doing, right? And 
we do it in a whole number of different ways. And, and I'll, I would want to like get into each one of them uh, fairly quickly. So for start, oops, I guess we lost the slide. Um, we'll come back. But the slide shows our uh, product selection. So the idea is that we have a very limited set of SKUs. There we go. We have a very limited set of SKUs, right? We're not the everything store. We, we only carry 1,200 items. But the way we select the SKUs, we are very diligent about what, what makes it on our site. It, it primarily goes to three criteria, right? One, it has to be wholesale. I mean, we're in the business of selling you wholesale items. So we want to make sure it's wholesale. By that, what I mean is it's bulk, right? With the unit pricing, is going to be cheaper than the retail option. Um, second, customers want to buy it. Now, I, I don't know what's, <laughs> uh, why do we see this, but Americans love Scandinavian water. I mean, you, you see Wasp water there. It's one of our highest selling items. It does really well. We have good water in the US, but you know, for some reason we sell that a lot. If you notice, that's one of the leading brands in luxury items, luxury water, right? And that's why it makes it on our site, because customers want to buy it. There's a reason why we don't have reviews for products on our site, because if it's bad, we're not going to carry it. We're only going to carry two types of water, and they're usually number one and number two, right? Then the third is, well, if the customers love it, if it's wholesale, can we, can we ship it and make money off it? And that's where it gets tricky, and that's where we have to keep it simple, right? For the most part, many of the items are expensive enough and light enough for us to ship, right? But in case of water, sometimes it doesn't make sense, right? With our power, because we're selling so many of these items, we can actually go to the supplier and say, well, can you design a cardboard box that looks like the one that you see next to those chips so that they don't break? Or can you design wash water in plastic bottles that you can recycle, but not glass, right? And those suppliers do that because we buy so much of this product in a single order. So we keep the product selection simple. Nothing fancy. Everything that we keep sells really fast. And then our distribution network is fairly localized. Why? I mean, it's counterintuitive. Amazon is extremely centralized. In fact, you might hear later in the day that this might be a bad idea. Well, the reason we keep it localized is because, believe it or not, but there are different tastes even in the US, right? What a, what a customer would like in Florida would be different than what a customer would like in New York. Moreover, as an operator, I want to be sure that I have that product in our warehouse when you do buy it, right? So the eight warehouses that you see in the yellow dots really uh, have that localized product for those states that are around it, right? And I know we're, we're, we're kind of keeping, we're, we're, when you go localized, you don't extract all the benefits of a centralized fulfillment system. But this is a conscious choice as we grow to make, again, keep things simple. Flexible labor. So I can't stress, but we do not hire uh, extremely specialized labor early on. Well, why? Surely I would love to get that fastest warehouse packer or a picker from Amazon and then, um, uh, and then have them in our company so that they can be really good. But it doesn't help us when we are so young and so early, right? We're, we're pulling this off with 68 full-time employees, which includes warehouse management, finance, marketing, HR, engineering, pretty much everything, right? Why do we need flexible labor? Well, because we need people to contribute in every part of the supply chain. You, you see, see the guy up there, Moose, uh, he's one of my favorite guys in the warehouse. He's actually a forklift driver, but he's also a model for one of our t-shirts that we sell online, right? He also packs boxes. He also writes those thank you notes that go to the customer. So early on, and, and that, that, that applies for everyone in the office as well, like we do a lot of different things just so that work can be done, just so that orders are out. Right? As we grow, I'm sure we're going to get specialized labor. Right? And before I play the video here, uh, what, what I want to what I want to show is kind of highlight the use of off-the-shelf technology solutions for our warehouse processes. We've built our warehouses by, by hand, by scratch, and also highlight that we do a lot of experimentation. I mean, you'll see an iPod, an iPad, a Google Glass, and a funny-looking robot. You know, you just pay attention to how we use it in our warehouse. Can we play the video real quick? What happens when successful tech entrepreneurs take over a boring warehouse just outside of New York City? All right. You get boxed. 
we wanted to build a service that no one had, had built yet. The future of shopping will happen on mobile devices, and that's we're just trying to get ahead of the curve. What Voxed founder and CEO Che Huang built is the e-commerce answer to wholesale clubs like Costco and Sam's Club, buying in bulk minus the membership fees. It's about shipping, it's about saving you time uh, and saving you a little bit of money. Prices are on par with other wholesale clubs, and nearly 8 in 10 orders qualify for free shipping. The boxes are filled in warehouses in New Jersey and Las Vegas, strategic locations to reach a large part of the population in little time. 88% of our packages arrive in two days or less. To the general consumer, it seems like we're a very traditional online retailer. Behind the scenes, we're still very much a technology company. So I see the orders. And then How do once I find you, out what's in the order? So once you tap on the side into a particular order, you've claimed it in our software. There's right. a yeah. creepy little robot, robot back here. Around, yeah. What so, is going yeah. on in here? So part of it, it, you know, even if you look at the robot, we're trying these technologies out and we're trying to get better. It's a longer video, but I guess it gives you the point that the idea is we experiment a lot when it comes to technology, right? Clearly Google, Google Glass, we don't use it anymore. Uh, we're, we're trying things with virtual reality, try to things make more uh, seamless. But that's the idea. We don't invest too much in automation, keep things simple. And then packaging, I think this is where our unique edge comes in. So j just look at each one of those four pictures and I'll start with the second one. Our boxes are designed to be as heavy as possible so that we can ship, right? Without it being too heavy and too big, so that people cannot carry it in their house, right? So it's just that perfect size at the maximum size. They're neatly packed. I mean, you see the kids opening one, it's almost like Christmas every time you place an order. Nicely packed, very snug, so that we you know, minimize the air that we are shipping. There's a reason why they're white. I mean, who's our target demographic? Families. What do kids love to do? Well, color the boxes, right? So we change the color and keep it such that they can color and then send us pictures. And then even the sizes are designed in such a way that we can nicely fit that UPS or FedEx truck, FedEx truck that comes to our door. Right? So there's a thought to everything that we do to minimize the air that we ship to you so that we can actually make a profit right? and you get the cheapest price. So, you know, all of this leads to in a kind of an engaged customer base. So people feel like a member. We don't charge you a dime, uh, you know, or a cent for, um, membership, yet people feel that they're part of this family where they, just, where they can pr push a button and get the items that they need delivered just to their house, right? And you, you'll, you'll see, like, you'll notice that people do a lot of creative things, right? Like kids make uh, cars out of the boxes uh, and post pictures back. People keep their kids or cats in these boxes and play with it, right? But that's, that, that social engagement that we get uh, is kind of a trigger for customers to come back and continue to order from us again and again. That's the result number one. And then the second result is effectively what we've done is designed a very modular uh, operating system. Why? I think I've seen this kind of, this is kind of the classic uh, Amazon playbook where they have done extremely well in operations in designing things that can replicate really well. You start with one center and then you replicate into 80 and then you go to a new country. We, we, we do something similar, but even better, I would say. Like our times to start a warehouse, the, day, the number of days required to scale our existing warehouse, to add a new product, F for that matter, even installing automation is fairly low. Everything is extremely modular. I can add a packing table and a warehouse worker in a day. I can open a warehouse fairly quickly. And within months, I can actually add um, an automation module uh, to the automation system that we are planning on building. Um, so that it can scale very quickly. And we really need this. We really need this because as Box continues to grow, we need, the operations has to be ahead and, and allow us to grow, right? And that's kind of the fundamental reason why we keep things simple. So, you know, it, <laughs> what is our goal? Well, we want to be the fastest growing CPG uh, retailer online next year. We've laid the groundwork for this year. And, and, and you know, hopefully you hear me speaking next year on how we achieve this, but that, that's our mission this upcoming year, right? Like we really want to grow fast in this arena. Finally, I would say, you know, if you, if you are in the US, uh, if, you know, if you have family in the US, tell them about us, right? Like try experiment with this uh, concept and 
give us feedback, see how it is, and help us help you never run out of stuff. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. So do we have any questions for Karen? Dun, 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 dun. I'm curious to know uh, to which extent do you think that your suppliers are supporting you to grow as fast as you want to? Do you have any examples on, on, on things which you have done together with your suppliers in order to grow your business? Yeah, I think, I think suppliers, you know, it's a good question because suppliers are oftentimes very skeptical, right, for a young company and especially because we don't sell all their products. So take the example of P&G. They have thousands of products, right, but we sell a few of them. Most of them have been very supportive because very early on, we can place an extremely large order, right? And then the kind of analytics that we can give them is very unique because we have only two items that we are selling, two kinds of water. They sell a lot of it. And so oftentimes, our, our pitch to them is, you can experiment on our platform and we can tell you, like you can increase the price by two cents or three cents and how that affects your sales, right? So I, th I think, you know, we have to be careful as a young company that we want to give something back to the suppliers for them to work with us. And, and, and sometimes, you know, they, they love to do that. Voss is a perfect example. I mean, uh, we, we work heavily with them uh, in their Norwegian office and, and they give us essentially what we demand, which is those plastic bottles, right? Um, there are many who are still skeptical, but hopefully they change soon. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Everyone, another round of applause for Karen. Thank you.